What's going on guys, Bang Gugan here coming back at you with another video. And today we're coming at you with another Madden NFL 18 rebuild, fantasy style rebuild. This time we're doing the LA Chargers. And, um, you know, usually I'll come out here and I'll do a little quick monologue about the Chargers, but apparently people skip my monologue as if I don't have important things to say. Very, very upsetting. But we're going to start it off with thank you guys so much. You had a thousand likes in like eight hours or seven, like a very short amount of time. You guys hit 1,000 likes with like three or four dislikes on my Bears rebuild. So thank you guys so much for that. I usually don't ask for likes, but I mean, if you guys want to hit a thousand likes again in like half a day or like even less than that, I guess I might as well drop another rebuild tomorrow if you want that. If you guys are interested, maybe I'll get to raise the bar, but I guess we're going to leave it at a thousand for right now. Um, but since apparently some people have already skipped past this part, here's what I'll say. I thought about moving my webcam, um, because I had it on the bottom right, but apparently that covered up the development trait. So I thought about moving it to the top right, and it, that's what I was uh, going to start the video like, and I'm like, oh no, that would stop something quite significant from happening. And this is the only time I have ever mentioned it, the first and probably the only time I will ever mention it. That would have covered up my coach name. Now, if you guys have been living your life through the rebuilds from Madden 15, 16, 17, now 18, without realizing it, I have changed my coach name to something like somewhat ridiculous, every single one of them pretty much. Um, starting out, like I think I did it in Madden 16 or 17, might have been the first time. But from then on, I've been doing ridiculous coach names where I spend about 10 or 15 seconds coming up with a pun or a joke revolving the team in some way. Um, and I think for this one, I, I don't even have to make a joke. I can just like take something from it and it's just going to be a joke in itself. You guys will see, obviously, but this is the only time I'll ever mention it. We've had some fun ones like Jameis stole and gave me crabs um, is one that stands out in my mind. But this one's different, but I can't have it in the top right for obvious reasons. So we're going to have it in the top left. Although I think maybe back to bottom left could be the best move. Regardless, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. Can you connect? What the hell? Um, and, you know, your top three players, you got Keenan Allen, who looks like he would almost look more normal if his beard was at the top of his head, his hair, and his, you know, he had a shaven chin. We got Antonio Gates, probably going to have to trade him, Melvin Ingram. We got some good players on this team, though. But, um, I don't know. Let's go ahead and get right into things. Let's do a roster breakdown and then make some trades. All right, here we have the team, and um, this is Vanish style, so we literally can do whatever we want. If you guys want to see the realistic rebuild playlist, that is also on the channel. My next rebuild that I do probably will be a realistic rebuild. Um, all right, we need to hold up. for. Uh, let me just congratulate Matt Slauson on his facial hair. He looks like an 1880s baseball player. Um, looking, looking quite nice. But with this team, without injuries, it looks a little bit like this. Forrest Lamp is in the lineup. I like to see it. Finally, I think he's going to be a very good player. The former Western Kentucky Hillsopper. Um, but, you know, Phillip Rivers is just not the answer. Obviously, 35 years old. we got to trade him before he starts to go down, which will be immediately. Antonio Gates, same deal. But it's not a bad team. Like, Travis Benjamin's the one part that I, I don't really want him on the roster. I think with Keenan Allen, Tyrell Williams, and Mike Williams, we're going to have a great just trio of wide receivers. And then Dontrell Inman could be worse. Melvin Gordon's a beast on the defensive side of the ball. Of course, we have Trey Boston, Jaleel Adai, Adai excuse me. Um, linebackers need need improvement. Like, Jatavis Brown is kind of a beast, but Denzel Perryman uh, hasn't really ascended to the level that a lot of people thought he might, because uh, he was just a beast at Miami. Kyle Emanuel could be, could be worse, I guess, but we need to upgrade a lot of these positions. Cornerbacks, I think, is fairly okay. Have no real problems there. And the defensive line is just phenomenal between Melvin Ingram, Corey Leach, Brandon Meebane, and Joey Bosa. Not to mention Jeremiah Atachu. Jerry, what a beast he is. Uh, this is interesting. I think we have 3-4 personnel, but the game has made it so it's a 4-3, which means that Jerry isn't playing, but he's a pass rusher. So I think what we need to do is switch this back to a 3-4, move Jatavis Brown inside inside linebacker, and... Um, Melvin Ingram out to left outside linebacker, Jerry Itachu out to right outside linebacker, with Joey Bosa essentially playing with 3-4 defensive end, Corey Legit, same deal. And then, you know, Brennan Meebane can be our nose tackle. That's what we have to do. All right, I'll do that um, before we start the first season. Let's go ahead and make some trades. 
I just got a ridiculous idea and I really, really would like to test it out. So what I think I'm gonna do is simulate four weeks into the future so I can get some XP on some of my fellas, upgrade them a bit, and then use these upgraded versions of these players to trade for better players. It's an interesting idea. We're gonna see how it plays out. So I guess I'll see you in four weeks. Or like two seconds, but four weeks will have passed. And actually, I have I will have waited four weeks in real life by the time I make the video. So I will see you in four weeks real time. All right, here we are four weeks later um, in the game and in real life. You know, you know yeah, yeah, I changed sweatshirts and made my bed for the joke. Fuck you. I thought it was funny. Whatever. Um, but I've used this XP to upgrade my player. So some overalls have changed slightly and no regressions happen. It's like Travis Benjamin's up to an 82. Um... Forest Lamps up to an 83. I think Matt Russell Kuhn was a 79. He's up to an 80. Ter uh, Terrell Williams. Terrell. What? Why did I say that so weird? Tyrell Williams is up to an 82. Um, so Keenan Allen's up to a 90. So overalls have changed very slightly, but none have gone down. Even Trevor Williams is up to an 80. I didn't even know he was that high. Okay. So now I'm going to make trades. And uh, I think they're going to have better... Attributes, am I cheating? Not really. I'm just rebuilding whenever I want to. All right, with this trade, I'm trading Corey Legit, Tyrell Williams, and a third round pick for JJ Watt from the Houston Texans. I wanted to trade Travis Benjamin, but he just didn't offer the same amount of value to the Texans that Tyrell Williams did. So I figured I would cut ties with Tyrell Williams, and uh, I will still trade Travis Benjamin. I just don't want him on the team at all. Some team's going to want him, but the Texans only had a yellow interest and now red interest, of course, because. Uh, they have Tyra Williams now, they don't really need him. But JJ Watt's on the team. And uh, I think that adds a really big piece to our defensive line. I, of course, traded Corey Leisure, but like we don't have a hole there anymore. JJ Watt's a beast. I've never seen Corey Leisure develop into anything in game. So JJ Watt, now at right end, is going to be an absolute beast. I'll make him 3 4 versatile. Is 99 available? It's not. 98 is a pretty sick number. He's going to wear that. My suspicions were accurate. Joey Bosa. Where's 99? Um, we're not going to strip it from him. That'd be, that'd be absolutely ridiculous. But there is another player I'd like to get. And I might have to cut ties with Jeremiah Tatch in order to do so, which I really don't want to do because I like him a lot. Loved him at Georgia Tech. I said he was going to be a sick player in the NFL. He's only 79 overall in game, which is weird because I think he's really, really good in, in real life. And uh, he was in that class of pass rushers that I absolutely loved in 2014 with Demarcus Lawrence and Khalil Mack. And, um, of course, Jeremiah Tachi. Those are, like, three of my highest graded guys. And I think they're they're all pretty good. Khalil Mack is a little bit better than the others. With this trade, we are moving on from Phillip Rivers. And, you know, the Phillip Rivers in Los Angeles slash San Diego is over. In the realistic rebuild realm, we would not have traded him, obviously, because he's a, still a good quarterback, but he is 35. And over this three- to four-year span that we're going to rebuild the Chargers uh, in this, you know, fantasy-style uh, world, He's just not going to work. We need a better option. We need a younger option, someone that we can develop. Uh, so Travis Benjamin is also headed to Baltimore, as well as a six-round pick for Tony Jefferson, who's going to be our new starting strong safety, which means I can probably move on from Jaleel Adai, who is a good San Diego char Los Angeles charger. Um, but he's just he's not what I'm looking for here. So we're going to err in a new, uh, or usher in a new era of charger football with Kellen fucking Clemens. You guessed it. This trader, we're going to move on from legendary tight end. I think he's, what, second all-time in, in touchdowns. Definitely... F nah, I think it's actually first all-time in touchdowns for tight ends. I think he passed Tony G. Um, but we're trading Antonio Gates, Trey Boston, and a fourth-round pick next year for the first-round pick from the Bears, as well as a fifth next year. Or, no, fifth this year. Next? This? One or, one or the other. With this trade, I'm trading Jaleel Adai, Russell Okung, and a fourth round pick for Andrew Norwell from the Carolina Panthers. I could play him really at any position on the offensive line. He's probably going to end up being my left tackle, and I probably want to see if I can go ahead and get a Trey Turner from the Panthers as well. I don't think I'll be able to, but it's worth a shot. With this trade, I actually feel like I'm stealing from the Titans, essentially, with Brendan Meebane, a six and a seventh next year for Jack Conklin, one of the best young right tackles in the league, one of the best young tackles overall, honestly. Best young players. We go as high as that. 
The overall seems just really low for him at an 81. I think he should be way higher. I don't know if the roster that I'm using is, is weird. Maybe I need to update it again. But I think I'm using the most current one. Uh, that's odd, though. I mean, like, that was such an easy thing to do. And I could probably trade them Joe ha uh, Chris Hairston. They're going to have high interest. And maybe I can use that to get Taylor Lewan. Not even a chance. But I can use it to get Quentin Spain, though, which isn't even close to as good. But it's still a decent option on the offensive line. I'm fine with that. All right, so this is going to be the team for season number one. I think it looks pretty good. The best offensive line I think I've ever had season one. Dan Feeney is going to play center for me. I've moved Andrew Norwell over to left tackle where he's at 87 overall, opposed to an 85 overall at left guard. Uh, wide receiver core is worse, but Mike Williams is starting, so I'm okay with that. Uh, Melvin Gordon is a starting tailback, obviously. We're being led by Kellen Clemens, the beast that he is. Tony Jefferson's his new starting strong safety. We've moved back to a 3-4 where Darius Phylon Darius Phylon? I know, I know, I don't even know why I did the Damien Square. Yeah. Uh, Tony Palapoy. Yeah. Tenny. What the fuck? I don't know. I shouldn't have done that. I got conf I got cocky. Okay. Uh, quarterbacks are nice. I've moved Desmond King to free safety where he's a 74 overall. He was a beast at Iowa. You know, he had a ton of potential to go in and play safety. I didn't even know he was on the Chargers, to be honest. I completely forgot. We have a pretty good team. I think we're good enough to... Uh, to go like two or three wins season one because we have Kellen Clemens. He is a beast, but you never know. I'm going to predict maybe not great, but I think after a great draft and free agency, we're going to be set up for a great season two and three and four. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are two and six. <laughs> Chiefs are two and six. That's funny. Just lost to the Patriots uh, by 41, putting up a remarkable zero points. Kellen Clemens is electric. Shout out to the Lightning Bolt and the Chargers logo for the only electricity that this offense has seen the entire year. Uh, decent amount of XP. I'm not going to bother spending it right now. I see that Quinton Spain is a free agent. I wonder who else could be. Anyone important? Brennan Oliver, Jeremiah Tachu, Nick Novak. I'm going to bring back these top four guys. Other than that, I think the rest can probably walk. All right, so I brought back Quentin Spain and Brandon Oliver, but Jerry Attachu and Nick Novak really didn't have much interest, but that's okay. I'm going to franchise tag Jeremiah Attachu no matter what, and then I can probably find a better kicker than Nick Novak, although the <laughs> kicking with the Chargers has just been so wishy-washy, I don't even know. We're going to send him to the playoffs, though, which we are more than likely not going to make. And then the real rebuild starts in the offseason and the draft and the free agency and things like that. All right, so we did. Did not make the playoffs. I mean, that's, that's kind of the thing. Seven and nine. Mad Sim is just screwed. The Chiefs are six and ten. Broncos 11 and five. Raiders eight and eight. We went seven and nine. It's just just weird. Kellen Clemens is just too good, I guess. Wouldn't let us lose enough games. With the stats, though, Kellen Clemens threw for 3,400 yards, 18 touchdowns, still only six interceptions, rushing. Melvin Gordon was pretty good overall. Uh, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. Receiving Keenan Allen over a thousand yards, five touchdowns. Brandon Oliver had five receiving touchdowns as well. That's interesting. As far as blocking goes, you know, a decent amount of sacks lit up from our tackles. But uh, we had four players with 100 tackles or more in Jeremiah Tachu, JJ Watt, Melvin Ingram, and Denzel Perryman. Tackles for loss would be 19 from JJ Watt, who also had 23 sacks, which is, of course, now the record. Joey Bosa had 11 and a half, so we're finally getting after the quarterback in these rebuilds. Interceptions, uh, wow, a painful amount. Like, <laughs> so few. Four fumbles, we had two from Casey Hayward, led the team. No one had more than one fumble recovery. I don't see any defensive touchdowns. We didn't have any. We'll check out the yearly awards as Aaron Rodgers takes home MVP of the 10 and 6 Green Bay Packers. What team am I doing? I'm the Chargers. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Defensive player of the year goes to Calais Campbell. No Chargers. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Deshaun Watson. There's Mike Williams at number nine. And then defensive rookie of the year goes to Carl Lawson. Again, no Chargers. Hoping to see Desmond King in there, but no. But uh, let's go ahead and advance to the offseason. Actually, let's see who's in the Super Bowl. Why not? Some people care about that. I don't know why they would. Like, it's just so random in simulation. Um... So if I read dumb as rocks. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that got me. Uh, doesn't really say who's in the Super Bowl. We'll, ch we'll check it out. Why not? Top stories, Super Bowl. 
Super Bowl. This is going to say Steelers Eagles. Okay. That's who's in the Super Bowl. It doesn't really matter who wins, if I'm being honest. We're just going to advance the offseason. It really doesn't matter. I don't know why. I want, I want a franchise tag, Jeremiah Tachi. I'm just going to take the salary and the signing bonus down so he rejects, and then I can franchise tag him. There we go. We're going to franchise Jerry Tachi. I have a reason for this. I only want him to a one-year deal because I plan on trading him. That's, you know, the big surprise I had for you guys. We're advancing to offseason and free agency. Hopefully, there's some sick guys in here. We don't really have much money to work with, but it's the usual group of fellas. You know, two former Chargers guys in there, Antonio Gates and Ladarius Green. I am interested in neither. But uh, overall, I mean, really not much here that I care about. So I guess I'll probably just see you guys uh, at the draft. All right, so here we are in the draft. We have the 8th and 11th pick in the first round. Might as well just simulate there. I have no plans on trading up in any capacity. So let's go ahead and see who's on the board so we might make a uh, charger. I don't know why it's scouting tight ends for me. I don't want one. Unless I run a dual tight end set, which could be cool. Oh, what? Oh, he's so good. Okay, calm down. I just freaked out a bit. Six set. Yo, what is going on with these tight ends? I'm gonna draft them. Fuck. He's. Mm. Hmm. Now I shouldn't have done what I just did, but we're gonna hopefully write that wrong, potentially with a receiver. And I have two on my board that I'm really interested in at this juncture, and that would be Jai Winters and Dre Wingo. Uh, Dre Wingo is a little bit slower, Jai Winters is a bit faster, but not necessarily as polished right now. He's a bit taller. It's almost like we're taking Mike Williams 2.0 here. So I kind of want to go Dre Wingo. I'm, I'm very mixed on who I want right now. Um, I don't know. There are a bunch of guys in here that I don't want. Quarterback sucks, so don't even worry about that. I don't really know. I don't know what to do. I'm moving back in the draft a bit. Two first round, or excuse me, two fifth round picks and my first to move down to 21 and pick up a third. I think it's a decent value trade for us. It's what I did. And uh, we're going to reassess the draft board if, you know, see who's there. I saw Jai Winters just go, which makes my decision, I think, a little bit easier. Dre Wingo, welcome to the team. 80 overall, normal development. He's ranked number nine. We took him at 21. Can you guys even see this? You see a little bit of what he looks like. There's really not a great spot for my my face cam as big as it is. It's just let me know in the comments what I should do. He is slow, but he's also pretty good. You know, he wins and losses. I'm okay with that pick. 80 overall is pretty good. That's a pretty good rookie. With this pick, I'm going back to wide receiver, and I'm going to be taking Dalvin Hartman. I'm going to be taking Dalvin. Will you turn on what? Dalvin Hartman, eight spec catch. B plus catching and B plus route running. Not amazing from an athletic standpoint, but he's very good at what he does. Top three skills. I think it's going to be a perfect fourth receiver for us. So Dalvin Hartman, welcome to the team. 77 overall. It's an excellent pick. Took him at uh, 43. He's ranked number 29. 93 spectacular catch. Holy. Uh, 66 awareness. He's going to be a really good player for us. I'm comfortable with this pick. I think it's an excellent fourth, and we're set at wide receivers, I think, for the entire rest of this thing. This wasn't a great draft class. If I Can I skip ahead, please? This wasn't a, a great draft class, if I'm being honest. Uh, no real, just amazing players that I couldn't pass up on, which is unfortunate. And I still don't have a quarterback. That's like my biggest issue right now. Why would I do, why did I take this tight end? <laughs> like, I just totally didn't need him at all. Why would I do that? I'm trading down for a second next year. Chicago, yeah, you guys suck. That's fine. That's the end of my draft. See you guys for the start of season number two. All right, we've got some XP to use before we start the next season, so I might as well use some of that. And uh, look at this. This is a good receiving core. But uh, Cardinal Jones is our starting quarterback, which is is a disaster. All right, so th this, you know, if you get what I'm doing here, I've assembled the Watt family onto one team. Derek Watt. J.J. Watt and now T.J. Watt are all on the Los Angeles Chargers. However, in order to have that nice little storyline for me, uh, I had to give up kind of a lot. So Jeremiah Tattoo's fine. 
Um, Desmond King was my starting free safety. He was all the way up to a 77 overall, I guess, from a 74 is a huge jump. But I'm also giving away my first round pick in order to get TJ Watt, and I still don't have a quarterback. So I need to kind of address how I'm going to get a quarterback or my first round pick back because I need it badly. I need picks. I need a quarterback. I need to draft one. Okay, 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 okay. What? I just offered Nigel Harris for my first round pick back, and that thing filled the fuck up. That thing is so far. I don't know how that happened. Um, I don't know why they even want him. He's a 71 overall, and I just add a seventh round pick, and I get my first round pick back. That's pretty cool. Now I need a free safety. Like, badly. I hate when you have players who are just out of the range of any team having interest in them. So I, I'm trying to make a trade for either a first-round pick or a free safety. Uh, and I just can't necessarily do it because I don't have players who have any value. I might end up trading Brandon Oliver. That might be what's end up, what ends up happening. I'm going to hold on to Christian Burt for a little while longer and see if I can do something with him. It sounded odd that I just said that. And whatever. Um, Brandon Oliver is probably off the team. I need either a safety or a first round pick, or both. I don't really want Jordan Poyer. I've never gotten him. I don't intend on starting now. With this trade, I'm trading Brandon Oliver in a second round pick next year for the first round pick from the Giants, which is projected to be top five. In fact, number two overall, which is pretty cool. Eli Manning's not any, uh, on the team anymore. So unless Davis Webb goes off, we should be in for uh, a good show there. But um, I don't know, we have dual tight ends again. Maybe this is the new Antonio Gates. If Antonio Gates was uh, at any point 6'6 and really, really fast, not that he wasn't those things, but he was 6'5 and like decently fast. But Christian Burt is, is incredible, despite his development, it is incredibly fast. But this is going to be the team for season number two. I actually have pretty high hopes. Sick outside linebackers, no safety, we need a defensive tackle. We need a quarterback. This season's not going to be successful. Cardell Jones is not going to do anything for us, which is unfortunate, but it's the reality. We'll draft a quarterback next year, provided there actually is a decent one. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark, see how we're doing. Okay, so I just got back from the bathroom, and unlike shitting the bed in there, I mean, there's no bed in the bathroom, but unlike the piece of shit that happened in there, I, I pissed. But it's for the joke. Whatever. We were 6-1. and one. How is that a thing? How are we 6-1 and one right now? On what planet is this a 6-1 and one team with no quarterback? Dude, Sim is broken. Sim is so broken. Let's see how we did it. Beat the Broncos. Lost very, very close to the Raiders. I mean, we're in just the closest games imaginable. Three points against the Broncos, seven points to the Raiders, seven points to the Broncos again, even though it was three the first time. Three points to the Steelers, six points to the Rams, six points to the Cardinals. I know, bigger gap here with 15, but like, they are all just extremely close games that we're winning. And I don't really want to. Is, Car is Carlo Jones the answer? He's slow development. He is not the answer. Did he get any player of the week at any point? He got offensive player of the week in week one. Threw for four passing touchdowns. Cardale, what are you doing, man? You're um, going off. Anyway, I guess Melvin Gordon is an impending free agent. We probably should bring him back. It's probably, you know, number one thing. We have a bunch of free agents. No. I mean, I don't, I always sign him back anyway. Melvin Gordon, Casey Hayward, Jason Brett, Trevor Williams, Denzel Perryman all need to come back. All right, so I re-signed everyone that I wanted to up from Denzel Perryman, except for Melvin Gordon, who wants a... Uh, a bigger salary and I feel like I should trade Casey Hayward I only signed him like to a two-year deal um, and I feel like he's gonna start uh, regressing which I really don't want because he's one of my top cornerbacks right now obviously the top cornerback but if he starts regressing which he hasn't really uh, much at all yet but like he's 28 he's gonna start I'm gonna do some scouting and then I will see you guys for the playoffs which it looks like we're gonna make all right we went 13 and 3 I I don't know what's going on with with the Chargers, dude, but we're sick. I don't know how it's a thing. Cardell Jones threw for 4,100 yards, 30 touchdowns, 14 picks. Melvin Gordon, I mean, didn't even play amazingly. 
but he played pretty well. How is this team as good as it is? My backup tight end got nine catches for th three touchdowns. I don't know. He's going off, honestly. Dre Wingo is a rookie. Ten TDs led the team. Uh, blocking, not even that many sacks allowed. Defensively, though, Denzel Perryman led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss would be 19 from J.J. Watt, who, again, 23 sacks, tying his own record. Eight and a half for Bosa, eight for T.J. Watt. You know, four for Melvin Ingram. Interceptions, we have five from Casey Hayward. He's going to start going down in overall, man. He's an 87. He's going to start going down. I promise you. I'm worried about it. I feel like I should trade him. I'm getting, I'm getting anxious. Forced fumbles, too, for Dexter McCoy. Led the way. Fumble recoveries, we only had three. Defensive touchdowns, still none. Let's check out awards, yearly awards. MVP goes to Aaron Rodgers. No chargers in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. No Chargers. Defensive Player of the Year goes to J.J. Watt. There we go. You get Denzel Perryman in there. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dre Wingo. Awesome. Christian Bird in there at number eight. We're going to have a ton of XP with Wingo, though. And Defensive Rookie of the Year, Nicholas Harvey. We didn't really draft anyone, so we're fine from there. Let's see how much XP we have. 25K. Did he make the Pro Bowl or something? He did. Still slow development. I can't use him. I can't use him. 31k XP for Dre Wingo. Still normal development, though, after winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. That sucks. That's a little bit lame. 45k XP for Forrest Lamp. That's got to be a Pro Bowl or something. Yep, Pro Bowl plus 32k. Hunter Henry had to make the Pro Bowl. Yeah, and he got quick development. I will take that any day of the week defensively. Um, no one really has any major amount of XP, to be honest. But uh, I suppose I'm going to use this XP. I mean, we have a wild card buy. I mean, you're, you're two, and we're in the playoffs already. This is, this is just a weird rebuild so far, i got to say. I don't know how our record is as good as it is. All right, so this is the upgraded team, and uh, it's really, really good, I think, for the most part. Middle linebackers haven't really developed all that much, uh, and neither has the defensive line. The defense is pretty much the exact same, but on the offense side of the ball, Hunter Henry's playing up to a 95. Forrest Lamps playing up to a 95. Dan Feeney up to an 88. Quentin Spain up to an 88. Like, the overalls have just massively gone up so much. Cardell Jones up to a 76. Mike Williams, 86. Dre Wingo, 85. D. Hartman, I don't know what his first name is, up to an 81. Like, everyone is just playing at such a high level. And watch us lose in the divisional at home versus the Chiefs. I can't wait. We're an 82 overall. How are we here? <laughs> we have absolutely no business being in the playoffs. All right, so here we are in the playoffs. Look at this awful stadium. Down by 13. Make it 20. We are just absolutely getting crushed. 29 nothing. Make it 32 nothing. We finally got points on the board. 32 to 3. And um, looks like the final score is going to be... I don't even know. I can't even get it. Man... Trying to get into this. Yeah, so it looks like 35 to 9 is the final score. We got just absolutely crushed, which I feel like that's the way it should have gone. Cardo Jones was just deplorable. You know, what are you going to do? You win some, you lose some. We're going to come back for season three and hopefully dominate. All right, so we brought back Melvin Gordon and Chandler Catanzaro, but. Um, Hopefully there are some really good free agents. We have a decent amount of money to potentially spend. 30 million in cap room. Like, there are some really good players here. But none that I'm super interested in. To be honest... Ooh, Jeremiah Tachu did not get an offer. Um, I think I want Leonard Williams. I kind of get him a lot, but... This is my new defensive tackle. I will give him so much money. 104 total points. That should be enough to get him. I don't really need Vic Beasley. I don't need Delaney Walker. I don't need Joe Thomas or Richie Ingodnito. Don't need any of those guys. So as long as I can get Leonard Williams move him inside the defensive tackle, we're fine. He signed. Awesome. That is really, really good for us. As uh, now we get a super quality defensive tackle. This team is going places. I just saw Melvin Ingram's like an 88 overall now, which kind of sucks. So he's not going places, but Leonard Williams is. He's going to be like the best defensive tackle in the league uh, in this franchise in a very short amount of time. He's going down. He hates playing a new position. Not confident at all. 
Melvin Ingram is 30. He's regressing. Oh, no. Do I just... You know what? If Vic Beasley's still there, if Jeremiah Tachi's still there, I might... I might make an offer. I might make an offer. This is actually pretty odd. I've never seen catching be a top stat for any defensive player ever before. And here it is for some of these safeties. They're playmaker types, and they have catching as an option. These guys could be really good. I do need a safety. Let me see another playmaker safety. Do you have catching in your top? You don't. How are there... That's so strange. I've never seen that before. But, I mean, there's some decent safeties. Frank Everett looks like a beast. Kenny Ball looks like a beast. We got an interesting group of players here. Jeremiah Tachu had other plans. He didn't want to come back. That's fine. I get it. All right, here we go. We're in the draft in the second overall position. And I think we have another first rounder. Yeah, 28th. Why did we do well, dude? Inexplicable. Wide receiver goes number one overall. When's the last time that happened? All right, Cleveland is offering me a pretty sweet package for trading down. I'm picking up uh, my fifth or a fifth overall pick by moving down three spots. A first rounder next year and a second rounder this year. I can agree to those terms. Appreciate doing business with you. All right, I know who I want. I'm just going to take him now. Harris Nall out of Wisconsin. He doesn't look amazing, but he looks pretty good. If I had to, like, his A minus throw accuracy short looks great, but then his next highest stat is is a B, and not a B plus or anything like that. So he doesn't look amazing, but he looks very solid. I would guess like 81, 82 overall. That's what I'm hoping for. Here we go. 76. You piece of shit. He just can't really stretch the field. Not that fast. Throw power is average ish. I had to take a quarterback. He's not bad he's just like he's not great normal development too we'll make the best out of it all right with this pick i'm going to take dion Gragg out of oregon a minus tackle b plus hit power b plus block shed really great combine he has everything that you look for dion Gragg, welcome to the team 80 overall that makes up for a kind of first you know kind of shitty pick and he's very good 80 overall number 23 in the draft we take my 28 normal development and uh the safeties i wanted just went off the board. Uh, and by just, I mean at number 12? I didn't see the other one go. But he wasn't he wasn't on my board anymore. Oh, there he goes. 31. Okay. Next up on my, my board is, I guess, the last guy, OJ Broaden out of Florida. Looks great. Amazing top three skills, in my opinion. Really well-rounded. Great combine as well. He's super fast. Can jump really far and high super agile not that strong but he's you know, very good uh man what is going on with me in drafting these past two rebuild videos i mean he's not bad obviously he's ranked 25th we took him at 37 but the developments are just so bad continually slow development just sucks he's gonna be the fourth cornerback on my team i was hoping that maybe i could transition him to safety but i don't even know if i see that happening anymore all right this is something We've traded for Deshaun Watson. He's our new quarterback. Two second round picks and Jatavis Brown get it done. The reason I don't need Jatavis Brown anymore is because I drafted that middle linebacker. And Deshaun Watson's our new starting quarterback. He's an 88 overall after winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, which means he probably uh, will have a good development trade as well. Probably quick, I would guess, if he didn't have it already. Uh, we do have a third round pick. I can get a second next year. I don't know. Um, Saints, sure. Why Why not? Might as well. Deshaun Watson only has normal. That's fine, though. He's playing up to a 90 overall. He's in a good position. Uh, this quarterback that I drafted, I, I don't care for him anymore. I never really did. That's why I went out and traded for a quarterback, obviously. But Jason, why is Jason Verrett going down, man? Why did he go down? Getting older? He's 28. Casey Hayward's going down. This is what I'm talking about, dude. They just say, how old are you? And it gets younger every year. It's like, oh, you're 24, you're a rookie? Guess what, regression, you're getting older, you're shitty now. It's ridiculous, man. I need a safety, I need I need a cornerback, too, even. I guess I drafted Broughton, which was a good move, but jeez, dude, they're just, they're getting, <laughs> how is Jason Verrett going down? He just turned 28, it's unreal. I decided I needed Jadavion Clowney. 
So I'm trading Harris Nall, my drafted quarterback last year, or like just very recently, and Casey Hayward, as well as the third round pick for Jadavian Clowney. I know it, I didn't necessarily need Clowney, but here's the deal. I don't need um, Melvin Ingram to keep going down in overall. That's what I don't need. So I figure I can trade him probably to the Texans. I can get back Casey Hayward if I wanted him, which I don't because he's, you know, he's regressing. So even though Casey Hayward's played really well and he's still good in real life, I can't use him because he's just going to keep going down in overall and I don't need that. So now I'm going to uh, find a better, younger cornerback. It's very easy. All right, with this trade, I'm trading Melvin Ingram a second this year and a first next year for Marcus Dunlap from the Eagles. He's an 84 overall, really young player with quick development. I went to his page and I looked it up. So we traded for him. He's a good young cornerback, about the same overall as uh, Casey Hayward. This, it's a weird cornerback group. It really is. Uh, like I almost feel like I should try and trade Jason Ferret now. <laughs> so like I'm just going to trade all of my starters because they're getting a little bit older even though we're coming down the home stretch? Probably not. But what I need to do now is go out and get an actual starting free safety. We had our quarterback, we had our halfback, we had our fullback, we have our wide receivers, our tight ends, our offensive line, our defensive line, to a degree our linebackers, and it's just been the secondary, the entire thing that we haven't had. So I need to find that established safety. Oh, if I could trade for, oh my, if I could trade for Desmond Trufant, forget about it. Hmm, I don't think I can. All right, so I went ahead and traded for Jalen Collins. Went out and signed Cooper Schlesinger out of free agency, an 81 overall fullback who's 23. And I traded my starting uh, free safety as well as a first round, first round pick for Jalen Collins. And now I think what I'm going to do is trade Jay Fiva, even though I love Jason Verrett. I just don't want to continue to see him regress. I just I can't bear to watch that. I'm going to trade Jason Verrett. Can you imagine if I traded him and got... Desmond Trufant. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Oh my, I could probably do it too. I have a problem. Alright, so I traded Jason Verrett, Quentin Spain, and a first round pick for Desmond Trufant. I don't know why. I really don't. It's a significant upgrade at cornerback um, that I really didn't need. <laughs> and it's like now I have five really decent cornerbacks. Do I, who do I even trade? Do I trade Marcus Dunlap, who I just traded for? Probably not. I might trade Trevor Williams or Ricky OJ Broaden. I assume teams are going to be super interested in him. I need a I need a left guard now. Probably go probably go back and get Quentin Spain if I want him. Let me see if I can do that, actually. So I've completely scumbagged the Falcons with a second, a third, and a sixth this year, the second and third or next year. For Quentin Spain, he's back on the team, so all I did was give away picks that I really didn't need to get my starting left guard back, so he's cool. Welcome back, Quentin Spain. You were all just part of the master plan. And now I can take probably O.J. Broughton. Trevor Williams has played too well. I'm not going to trade him for a starting free safety. Or I could get Landon Collins, move him over. There are a number of options that I have. With this trade, I'm trading Dalvin Hartman, my fourth string wide receiver, and Jalen Collins for Eric Berry. He is going to be my new starting free safety. And um, if you're wondering, I went into free agency and I signed Jeremy Macklin and Philly Brown, AKA Corey is his first name. Took me a second to remember what that was. And um, on the defensive side of the ball, I feel like that's a fine trade to make because we do have cornerbacks um, to back him up. It's not like a huge issue. Desmond Trufant is our new number one. We have Marcus Dunlap. We have Trevor Williams. We still have, uh, what, OJ Broughton? Yeah, so I mean, like, we have we have good players. Team's good, although it's really different than what it was just like last season, which is strange. So we're gonna go ahead, make sure all these positions are right, and um, I guess you guys have seen the team. I will see you for the midseason mark. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are six and two. I think with a better team than last year, just not the same production. Hunter Henry is a free agent. Is this season three? I feel like it is. I think this is only season three. We have some quality free agents. Hunter Henry, Joey Bosa, Jack Conklin, our starting puncher, Drew Kayser. All right, let's go ahead and bring all these guys back. All right, so we re-signed everyone but Drew Kayser that I wanted to, who wants better salary, which he's a puncher. I don't I don't care. He can do whatever. Uh, but this is the team. We're doing okay. I think this could be the final season, depending on how well we do. 
But um, I think I'm going to spend some of this XP, use my coach XP, upgrade the team a little bit, and see you guys at the playoffs, which I think we're going to make for sure. All right, so this is the upgraded team. Looks very good. Looks great. I'm a big fan of it. You know, it could be better, I guess, but I think overall it's pretty solid. I'm surprised Joey Bosa isn't like a 95 overall at this point. Um, his power and finesse move were pretty low. I'm not sure why. This roster feels kind of weird. I don't know if that's um, something to do with actual, like, EA and Madden and setting the roster, or if that's like, I have the wrong roster loaded in. Or, but, uh, like, Joey Bosa being... Like having like 82 power or 82 finesse move like 70 power move to start off it's like that doesn't really feel accurate to me at all but here we are in the playoffs 11 4 and 1 interesting season we didn't get the first round by because uh, instead of getting a win there we tied unfortunate we'll check out the stats see how it all went down deshaun watson holy hell interesting season 4600 yards 46 touchdowns 17 picks is a lot, though. That's more than one a game. Not a big fan of that. Rushing, Melvin Gordon, pretty pretty good season. 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Receiving, Dre Wingo led our team in catches. And like, I kind of, I'm kind i mad about this now because we had Sean Watson, 4,600 yards, 46 touchdowns. We had Melvin Gordon, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. And we have receiving. Dre Wingo has the audacity to go 96 catches but not get... 960 yards and not get nine touchdowns and then keenan allen 1300 yards doesn't get 13 touchdowns and mike williams 1200 yards doesn't get 12 touchdowns they're messing with it man it was such so close in line uh and they just missed it unfortunately ocd kicking in defensively though denzel perryman pretty good season tackles for a loss would be 16 from jj watt who also had 16 sacks which led the team joey bosa had 11 Interceptions. We have six from Tony Jefferson, five from Marcus Dunlap, four from Eric Berry, four from Desmond Trufant. A lot of interceptions this year. Force fumbles, two from Trevor Williams, two from Denzel Perryman. I finally see one defensive touchdown. Two, though, Tony Jefferson and Desmond Trufant. Checking out awards. Show me MVP. Deshaun Watson at number four. Um, AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Deshaun Watson at number three. No Belvin Gordon. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Todd Davis. J.J. Watt at number three. Uh, Denzel Perryman at number 8. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Harris Nall of the Texans. Which maybe we would have gotten that, but like he's an 82 overall. Nowhere close to Deshaun Watson right now, who's in the 90s. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Haynes Israel. Deion Gregg comes in at number 4, which is on 4, should it? <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. We got some XP to spend. We're going to go ahead and spend this XP, upgrade the team, and then meet the... New England Patriots in the first round of the playoffs. Okay. So this is the upgraded team, by the way. Things are looking really, really good, I'd say, overall. Deshaun Watson playing up to a 94 overall. But look at Far Slamp and Dan Feeney. They were two rookies when we got them. Dan Feeney's up to an 89 overall at center. And Far Slamp is up to a 97 at age 25. Unreal. Unreal player. Extremely good offensive line overall. It's great offense. On the defensive side of the ball, you see that defensive line. You see that defensive secondary. I want I, I want to say defensive backfield, and I just said it was weird. Linebacking core is pretty good. I mean, like, we got the team. We got the dream. Let's get on the scene. Beat the hell out of the New England Patriots. I don't have another rhyme. But uh, 95 overall to their 91. I think we should be able to do it. Right, we're playing at Gillette. It's a very close game right now. 14 to 14 as we come back and score. Now 17 all headed into the half nearly, but we're going to score a go ahead 23 to 17. Now in the second half, 29 17 Chargers. Stretch out this lead, please. 36 to 17 is exactly what we needed. This is game 43 24 is your final score here as we take on the Patriots, led by Drew Brees. Unreal. Deshaun Watson, what a game. 387 yards and three touchdowns. Playing like an absolute beast. Love to see it. And we're going to head now into the divisional, which honestly we should have been there to begin with, but Broncos had to go and win the division. That's who I hope we get in the divisional, so we can just absolutely destroy them. I want to absolutely just annihilate them. 99 offense, 99 defense. We got this in the bag, locked up. We get the Steelers instead. We stole TJ Watt from them earlier. 
and now we're going to make them pay for ever doing that trade is TJ Watt's going to come in and get like, I don't know, what's a, what's a good number to get? Like 35 sacks this game? That's, that's reasonable and feasible. All right, let's go out there, get it done. Here we go. All right, we should be able to wrap things up here in the fourth quarter. 32 to 13 is your final score as we're going to walk away with another W. Sealers at Heinz Field are flashing up a thank you fans thing. Thanks for watching as we lose to the Chargers in the divisional. Now we're headed to the conference championship, riding high after that win, up to a 96 overall without even doing anything. That's what I like to see. This has been the most successful rebuild so far. I don't know how. Like we were even doing well before we had a team. Going up against the Jaguars in the conference championship, everyone is about the same as they were. But here we go at Everbank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. 96 overall to their 93 overall. Keep in mind, we have 99 offense, 99 defense. It's just special teams that's holding us back. But here we go. All right, Dallas and Seattle are in the NFC Conference Championship. All we have to do to face, I would say probably the Seahawks, is beat the Jaguars here on a rainy afternoon, rainy evening, probably evening. I don't know why it'd be an afternoon game for the playoffs. It's definitely not. I don't, it's an evening game. But we're going to jump out to an early 3-0 lead, but they quickly tied up. Now we're up 10-3 here in the second quarter. Make it 13-3, but Jaguars answer right back with a field goal and then a touchdown tying things up at 13. And now we're going up again 20-13. Can we take it back down by four? We're going to take the lead 23-23. Jacksonville is going to score, and then the Chargers come back and score very quickly. How? Deshaun Watson to Keenan Allen. Basically that entire drive look at that 30 yards then he hit mike williams for a tenner and then keenan allen for 23 and then keenan allen for 13 i was going to jump in but i mean we didn't even need to that's the end of the game hole oh, jacksonville was making it close but we now are, are, are now advancing to the super bowl off the back of a deshaun watson just demolition here in this playoffs he's played unbelievably well so is this team and uh, now we are headed to the Super Bowl to face, I would guess, the Seattle Seahawks, but, I mean, could be anyone, really. Yep, it is the Seahawks, the 10-5-1 Seahawks, two teams who have tied in the regular season in the Super Bowl. I would guess that's the first time that has ever happened. We're a 96 overall again. They're a 94 overall. Let's get it done. All right, here we are in the Super Bowl. Moment of truth. We're going to jump out to a 6-0 lead after a missed extra point. Now 13 after another touchdown, and we are bringing it to the Seahawks right now. As we stop them there, forcing a turnover, the Seahawks have yet to find the end zone, but there they go. And they're going to make this close if they can score. 14-13, we're going to go back up ahead, though. 19-14, the Seahawks answer. They are up by one, but we score really quickly, making it 25-20, and they score down by one, 26-25. I am jumping in the game here. It is an all-Madden. So it could be really cheesy. Can we get to the line, please? What is this? What is this? What is going on here? I got to call a timeout. I have no players on the field. There's no one on the field. Yo, Madden is so broken, dude. So broken. All right, we were finally back on the field. We had to burn one timeout, though, which really sucks. Here we go. Play action. We're going to go deep. Deshaun Watson airing it up. It's Trey Wingo. Trey Wingo is into the end zone for the touchdown. We score on one play, making it 31 to 26. Did we score too quickly? I don't think so. We're going to go for two. See, people like me to jump in a lot, but uh, I usually never do because I like to, you know, make the team do it. But we got gameplay and a rebuild. Who would believe it? Rolling out with Deshaun Watson. I'm going to run. I'm going to run Deshaun Watson into the end zone for the touchdown. I really hate that, um, like, what to do is on the screen for me. But I'm going to show you guys. It is an all Madden in case you care. I think I can, right? Settings, game options, difficulty, all Madden. There you go. All Madden simulation. Nothing crazy. We just came out here and we got it done. And this should be the Super Bowl, provided we can play some good defense real quick. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> He almost returned that. All right, they have three timeouts. Like, this game is far from over. We just put them in a position where they need a touchdown. And now let's just play some good defense. They're going to lob it up. Go up and get it. It's picked off by Williams, and that is the game. 
His second interception of the game, Trevor Williams. Ice it. Let's go. Here we are. Going to be another handoff to Melvin Gordon. Here it is. We're going to take things outside. And that is the game. We have done it. Super Bowl champions here. I think we're down in Miami, if I'm being honest. I don't I don't know where this was. I didn't I didn't check. But we have won the Super Bowl. The confetti is raining down in Los Angeles Chargers colors-ish. I guess they don't really Again, they still have yellow, but like their logo is uh white and navy now instead of this like classic powder blue and yellow. But that is going to be it. We're gonna see who the Super Bowl MVP was. I assume Deshaun Watson. And um I do want to see this confetti rain down because we've won the Super Bowl, which is not something that happens in every rebuild. It's not a rarity, but like Madden Sim screws me over a lot. It takes a lot of luck, even when you build up the best team to win the Super Bowl. Um, can I skip these highlights? Can we just get to the podium, please? As you see Dre Wingo with the game-winning touchdown. Maybe he's Super Bowl MVP. No, it's going to be Hunter Henry. As you can see, he has blurry stats. Dude, what is this game? What is, what is this game that EA made, man? <laughs> Like, it's so bad a lot of the time. Hunter Henry, I think it said six catches for 67 yards. It was blurry as hell. I couldn't even really read it. But uh, as you can see, there's a, the group of boys raising up the trophy. Deshaun Watson, Denzel Perryman. I saw Keenan Allen. I think Melvin Gordon was up there as well in the back. Is it? Yeah, that's definitely Melvin Gordon. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Hope we can hit that like target of a thousand and even more potentially for maybe another rebuild tomorrow as we've won the Super Bowl here with the Chargers. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, can't thank you guys enough for the support. Deshaun Watson, 426 yards and three touchdowns. Doesn't get Super Bowl MVP. But Hunter Henry, six catches for 67 yards and no touchdown gets it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. The shit don't run well.